The Australian government will support the U.S. ambition to get to Mars eventually with a $150 million fund. Joining us live now is MP Karen Andrews, Minister for Industry, Science and Technology. Karen, thank you for joining us. The it's big push today is about the number of jobs that will be created from this announcement. How many jobs can Australians mm -hmm. expect to come out of this? Well, the Australian space industry is incredibly important to, to us. Uh, it's currently worth about $4 billion and employs 10,000 people. Our aim uh, during the period of time from now through to 2030 is to grow the sector to $12 billion and an additional 20,000 jobs. Now, the focus of this $150 million announcement is to grow our Australian businesses, to work with NASA and to further develop technologies where we are, quite frankly, already world leading. So things such as automation and robotics are the things that we're going to be discussing initially with NASA to see how we can engage with them further, use our technologies as part of the Moon to Mars missions. So in, um, in Australia, in the mining sector, we're world leading with a lot of technologies and if I use the example of mining companies working in the Pilbara, a lot of their work is, um, is operated remotely from Perth, so some 1,600 kilometres away from where the mine, mining work is actually taking place. So we're going to be using those as examples when we talk to NASA about how we can support their, their mission. So in terms of the number of jobs, we're starting uh, now from a base where we've got about 10,000 space-related jobs here in Australia, growing those two to 20,000 and um, for an additional 20,000, and that's what we're going to be focusing on, the creation of jobs and developing technologies. When it comes to those, so if we've got 10,000 now and we want to grow it to about 20,000, so those extra 10,000 jobs, mm -hmm. are they likely to just be focused in Adelaide where the Space Centre is? Um, no, and it's an, it's an additional 20,000 jobs, so it will be um, 10,000 now plus 20,000 over the next 10 or so years. Now, we're headquartering the Australian Space Agency in Adelaide at uh, Lot 14, which is an innovation hub complex that uh, they're establishing in Adelaide. We're also setting up mission control there and there will be a space discovery centre because we want to uh, uh, make sure that our young people understand all the opportunities that are there from space and, and quite frankly uh, people really love space and they find it exciting and they find it inspirational. So that work is happening in, um, in Adelaide but also elsewhere around the, the country. So in Western Australia we're providing funding to work in conjunction with the Western Australia Australian government to look at uh, extending our skills and expertise in robotics and automation. So this will be support for industry right across Australia. So yes, there's um, a lot happening in South Australia, but there's also some great things happening in Western Australia, New South Wales and other states and territories around Australia. Given that this is quite specialised work, can you guarantee that these jobs will actually go to Australians and won't be farmed out overseas? Well, I'm very, uh, very keen and absolutely committed to growing Australian jobs. So we will be looking at developing a pipeline, and we've done that work for a number of years now, particularly focused on STEM, so science, technology, engineering and maths, and growing that pipeline from school into either a vocational education pathway or into a university. So that's important work that we've been doing now for a number of years. So absolutely we want these jobs to be going to Australians. But we also need to recognise that we will need to look at resources from overseas where we don't have the specialist skills here in Australia or where we need to bring in that expertise from overseas to train Australians for the jobs of the future. So. I would be working to maximise the number of jobs for Australians, but being realistic and understanding that we will need support from uh, specialist overseas workers. So realistically, how many Australians are actually going to be getting these jobs? It sounds like there's going to be a huge intake from overseas workers to get that specialist skills. Look, I don't think it's going to be a huge intake at all because we've already got a number of companies in Australia. I mean, we've got 10,000 people already employed in this sector. We've got um, here on the Gold Coast Gilmore Technologies that have also already 
um, develop some uh, world-class technology with their, their sounding rockets, so the test rockets. Um, there's other examples with nanosatellites. Mariota uh, in, in Adelaide is doing a lot of work in the, the space sector. And, of course, you've got the, the large businesses like um, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, that are already employing in the, the space sector here. But we do have an emerging industry sector that we need to put resources um, into, hence the $150 million announcement to support NASA in the uh, Moon to Mars mission. And let me be really clear, this is not $150 million that's going to NASA. This is $150 million to grow Australia's space sector, and that comes on top of all the money that we've already put in to the space sector, which now, quite frankly, totals over half a billion dollars. And that is an outstanding effort, given that um, the Australian Space Agency has only been in place for about 14 or 15 months. So we've come from you know, quite a low base. We didn't have an Australian Space Agency. And 14, 15 months uh, later, we've got a commitment of over half a billion dollars from the federal government, plus all of the money that the private sector industry is putting into to grow this sector here in Australia. So I'm very confident that we will reach the 20,000 um, additional jobs that, uh, that we have uh, targeted, but it's too early to say exactly how much of that's going to come out of a $150 million uh, commitment to uh, the NASA Moon to Mars project, because we have to sit down with NASA and say, well, these are the technologies that we have, and this is how we can help you, NASA, in achieving the aim of NASA and also the United States. And look, and we also need to be realistic and say, at this point in time, we don't know precisely what's going to come out of that, uh, that mission. A lot of things came out of the Apollo mission that were not anticipated when the announcement was first made by the United States uh, President that uh, the United States was headed to the moon. Now, what springs to, to mind for me is kidney dialysis. That came out of the Apollo uh, missions. Now, when uh, President Kennedy announced that the US was going to the moon, he didn't know that that oh. was going to come out of, of that. That yeah. wasn't going to be a technology. So there's lots of yeah. things that we will uncover that are so important to us. So Labor's saying that this $150 million would be better spent supporting those in drought-stricken parts of the country. Are they right? Mm -hmm. Well, we do um, put a lot of money into supporting our, our farmers and they need every single cent of the support that we're giving them and state governments and the community is providing to farmers. They are doing it incredibly tough. So the Future Drought Fund, currently, uh, well, it would be worth initially $3.9 billion. An additional $100 million will go in in July next year. That's very important money to our, our farmers. What this announcement does is provide um, indirectly a lot of support for our farmers because the technology that will be developed, and in fact some of the technology that is already in place, helps our farmers. So the earth observation, the information that comes from satellites will help farmers uh, during the drought. It will help them with their sensors. They can now start to track, uh, for example, their cattle where they are on our very, very large properties here in Australia. All of that comes from, from space. And I think maybe we need to do some more work with um, uh, the Australian public to make sure that they understand that each and every day they use some of the things from space. Every time you look at Google oh. Maps, that's using technology from, from space. But that technology is critical to our farmers. And, of course, it will lead into support our manufacturing industries. And, and at oh. the moment, 25% of Australian manufacturing is uh, food and food product related. Do you see how farmers might be feeling a bit forgotten at the moment, though, that they've got the Prime Minister off uh, having a very glamorous state dinner, announcing huge amounts of money for an international program when they're really struggling just to get food on the table? Well, what's important is for our farmers to know that we are taking every single step with them every single uh, day. And we do understand, all of Australia understands how hard it is for our farmers at the moment. I mean, the, the, the drought is... Um, is having a terrible impact on their livelihoods and on their, their families. So it is a very, very significant issue. But we also want to make sure that we are helping our farmers now, in the short term and in the long term. And the additional resources that we're putting into the space sector is designed to help them and to help other parts of Australian industry so that we are looking to the future as well as looking at how we help our farmers now.